I want you to imagine a situation in which you're going on a hike and you show up to the woods that you were planning to hike through. Maybe it's a five mile hike up a steep hill or up a mountain and it is covered with trees. But luckily, because of all the hikers before you, there is a very distinct path that has been carved through that space that you can easily walk down to get to your destination. But your friend says, let's not take this path. Let's blaze our own trail. Let's go through the woods. But instead, what they do is they follow. They don't want to get lost. So they follow the trail, but they walk through the woods beside the trail. A much more difficult track indeed, but still guided by that initial trail. Now, if you're of a sound mind, this should sound absolutely ridiculous and it's because it is if the trail is already carved for you why would you go trudging through the woods right next to it when you could just walk on it because it's difficult i don't really know but this is what it sounds like to me when someone says something to me along the lines of i study uh wing chun because bruce lee studied wing chun see when we look at the world of martial arts, we have this lineage of knowledge. And each instructor's knowledge is taking the instructor before them and then improving on that information. So if you imagine what happens in the world of martial arts is that each instructor kind of makes that trail. Okay, They cut down the trees. They push down the, the dirt, they pack the dirt, they maybe lay down gravel, and they get to a certain point in the woods. And then what you do as a student is you get to walk that same distance in half the time, or even less, because they carve that trail for you. And then what your job as a student to do is then pick up your shovel, pick up your axe, and start expanding that trail further. Now, I mentioned Bruce Lee and Wing Chun. See, Bruce Lee started his martial arts career with Wing Chun, which is an art that I study and I love very much. But he started it with Wing Chun and then evolved into his own system of Kung Fu that he called Jeet Kune Do. And then Jeet Kune Do evolved even further to the point in which it really wasn't a martial art at all. It was more of a, of a concept and a way of teaching and exploring the world of martial arts. That there was this path that he took and it always baffles me that when somebody is a big fan of Bruce Lee, lots of times they want to start where he started as opposed to starting where he left off and trying to continue further forward. And I know there's a kind of thought that like, well, I'm not Bruce Lee. And I understand that. But when you look at what Bruce Lee taught, nearing the end of his life, he didn't, when he got a new student, he didn't say, okay, let's first learn Wing Chun. He started teaching them where he was at the moment. He said, this is where I am at right now. This is what I'm experimenting with right now. And I'm going to teach you that thing. He didn't start them way back here. And the idea of, well, I want to mirror the path of somebody who I respect is kind of going against and almost disrespecting their journey. Because the reason why they took that journey, or at least a, a, partial reason for that journey was to push the world of martial arts forward was that we're in this one state they push it forward and they probably would prefer that you start here and keep pushing it forward as opposed to going back to where they were for example there's a practice in wing chun called chi sao and i won't get into the details of what chi sao is but long and short of it it's kind of a game that wing chun people play to help develop their sensitivity in a fight and learn how to fight really really close and bruce lee used to teach chi sao as a main part of his school but i can grab a book on my shelf and show you the note in which he sends a message to uh uh taki kimura in which he says chi sao is out stop teaching it in the schools we're moving on past that and he left it behind so it wouldn't make a lot of sense for a person who is trying to, or someone who's a big fan of Bruce Lee, to go back to doing Chi Sao and Wing Chun. Once again, I understand the thought. I understand the idea that Bruce Lee did Wing Chun, so therefore I want to do Wing Chun. 
because I like Bruce Lee. I kind of get that logic. But what you're doing is Bruce Lee already carved this trail for you. And you are ignoring the trail that he carved and instead walking beside that trail in the woods and trudging through the same thing he did. You will eventually come to the same conclusions that he did as well by following his exact same path but beside it. But you could get there in half the time or even less if you just walked on the trail that he blazed. The trail, well not even blazed, that he carved. And then you get to the point in which he ended his journey and then you keep pressing forward. And to me, that's how you honor him. And if you're a big fan of Bruce Lee's, that's, that's how you get there. Now, I understand a lot of people who watch this video don't necessarily know Bruce Lee outside of him just being a movie star. They go, Bruce Lee was cool in the movies, and that's it. And if you're a big fan of Bruce Lee and that's all that you know, I recommend looking into his writings, looking into his philosophy, and looking into his impact on the world of martial arts before you choose to mirror his journey. Because... He made it very clear that the preservation of tradition was not very important to him and that he wanted to, in, he also made it very clear he wanted to impart that onto his students. So it wasn't just a personal opinion of his. He actually really felt that everyone should be taking on this position of pushing martial arts forward as opposed to simply pre preserving tradition. There's nothing wrong with studying Wing Chun because you're interested in Wing Chun. Obviously, I, I study Wing Chun, so... So And I, I did it because I was interested in Wing Chun. But if you're getting into the martial arts world because you're a big fan of Bruce Lee, you really should start around where he left off, which is in Jeet Kune Do. Find yourself a good Jeet Kune Do based school and then explore from there. Many people consider Bruce Lee the founder of, or the father of mixed martial arts. And this is kind of true. Mixed martial arts predates Bruce Lee by hundreds of years. But really, he, he is the father of modern mixed martial arts that like mixed martial arts that we have today the kind of way we look at martial arts in america he's definitely the father of american martial arts mixed martial arts i would definitely say that so even one could even say that mixed martial arts to an extent is that further progression of what bruce lee started way back in the 60s now bruce lee was not a big fan of tournaments and he wasn't even that big of a fan of competition, he did some boxing matches and some of his students competed. And he was very proud of them for, for winning competitions. But, but he was very much about street fighting and self-defense um, because, you know, he loved like poking people in the eye, for example, like was one of his big moves. But that's kind of beside the point. What I'm getting at, though, is that if you're getting into the world of martial arts because you are a big fan of Bruce Lee, don't start where he started. Start where he left off and then continue to press that forward, I really think that that is the better way to honor him. Now, I don't know for sure. I didn't know Bruce Lee. My instructor knew Bruce Lee, and that's the sentiment that I always get from my instructor. But more importantly, we have Bruce Lee's writings. We have um, the Bruce Lee's fighting method. The, the I think it was a four or five volume set. I have it as a single uh, book, the complete edition. And we have the Tao of Jeet Kune Do. And both of those books very clearly reject the idea of going back to the tradition in order to carve the same path that your teacher did. The truth is that Muhammad Ali was really, really, really good. But there are boxers today who could beat Muhammad Ali in a fight. But he's the greatest because of how much progress he gave us in the world of boxing. That and his uh, social justice um, what he did for social justice is really big as well. We want to look at martial arts as a timeline through the ages where every single instructor carves a path through the woods and that the student walks that path, gets to the point in which the instructor left off, and then picks up the saw, picks up the axe, picks up the shovel, and then continues that path. I'll give you an example of how it happened, or an example of that happening in my life. That I trained once under a, I think it was 63 years old, a 63-year-old martial arts instructor who had developed a hybrid system of Kenpo and Kali. I really enjoyed it. However, the system had no ground fighting. Something that really surprised me was that when I became a black belt in the system, he took me aside and asked if I would put together a ground fighting curriculum for his system. 
because he knew that I, I understood grappling. And I, I, of course, I was happy to do it for him. But what he understood, what, in his mind, he said, you know, I'm, I'm a little old to be picking up or, or learning all of this new stuff. At least in his mind, he felt like he wasn't in a position to learn grappling, but he recognized that it was missing from his system and he wanted it added into the system. And so he literally handed me the saw. He handed me the axe. I mean, not literally, I guess, figuratively. <laughs> he handed me the shovel and said, this is as far as I could take it. Could you please take it further? And that's, I think, the healthiest way for the martial arts world to grow. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with studying traditional martial arts. Like I said, Wing Chun is one of the arts I study. But understand that if you're trying to progress or if you're trying to um, do the most effective possible martial art, if that's what your goal is, you're looking for efficiency, you want to pick, off where the, pick up where the instructor left off with all of their conclusions that they learn from a lifetime of study as opposed to being like, I'm going to ignore your lifetime of information and just start way over here and then like struggle my way through to end up ending my life at the exact same point that you ended yours. Now, of course, that's just my opinion. If you differ in the opinion or you think I'm way off base, I'd love to hear about it in the description box down below. However, if this is the kind of thing intrigues you and you'd like to study a uh, combative defense system, the martial art that I teach at my school, all the information you need to get started is in the description box down below or on our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. If you've made it to the end of this video, you're clearly enjoying it, so be sure to like and subscribe and share it with your friends. Also, you got to click that bell button. That will give you notifications about when I'm making it, when I put out another video. I should be doing about one a week. So until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense. Fight on.